My name is Lee Beggs, and I wanted to share with you something that the Lord has been stirring in my spirit over the last few months, just about the importance of knowing, believing, and following the Word of God. Um, it's something that God has been showing me just um, as I'm watching what's happening in culture, as I'm watching what's happening on TV, in the news media, and so many different outlets, as I'm watching these things unfold, um, God has just been stirring in me the importance of us knowing the Word of God. And so I just wanted to share some of that. Um, today, I have been running from this for a few months. The Lord told me back probably in November that this is something He wanted me to share. He said specifically He wanted me to share it on this podcast, and I have just been putting it off and putting it off, and so today I'm here, and I'm glad I am. Um, but what really prompted me to go ahead and, um, I guess, do this was a conversation I had with a sweet friend of mine a few months ago. She came to me. She's going through some struggles in her own family and really having a hard time. Someone that she loves deeply has walked away um, in just habitual sin with no signs right now of coming back, although I feel like God has spoken something differently. Um, as of right now, um, she has walked away from her family and from everything that she believed previously. And so this friend of mine is just really struggling. And she was actually at her home church, and uh, another lady in their church saw that she was struggling, and she came to her, and she said, oh, she said, you know, I'm not conservative, and I just feel like if this person is happy, then I'm happy for them, and walked away. And it left my friend devastated to hear that from a sister in Christ who should be speaking truth to her, and instead... Um, she basically just cast her thoughts and feelings to the wind and just said, well, if it feels good, do it. If she's happy, do it. And um, so it left my friend really reeling from that. And it just caused me to think more about these comments that we're hearing in our culture. And it is that mentality. If it feels good, do it. If you love it, great. If you're happy, I'm happy. And it's just that mentality that is so pervasive throughout all of our culture and now obviously invading our churches. And I wanted to share a scripture just to start us off from 2 Timothy 4.3. And it says this, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. And I think we're starting to see that more and more, certainly in the culture. Um, people outside the church are definitely surrounding themselves with people who will tell them what they want to hear. But also, I feel like even in the church now, and when I say the church, I don't mean faith community or my church, Lincolnton Methodist. I mean the church as the body of Christ, the church at large. I believe that we are allowing um, false doctrines to come in and to tell us what we want to hear instead of telling us what the Word of God says. And it's causing a great number to fall away. And I was thinking about that, you know, that whole uh, concept of, well, if it makes you happy, then I'm happy. Well, serial killers are happy when they're killing people. But it would be ridiculous for us to say, oh, if it makes you happy, then I'm happy for you. Go ahead, go on your killing spree. That's ridiculous. We would never do that. And yet in so many other um, areas of our society, we say that very thing. Oh, well, if you want to do that, that's fine. I'm happy for you. And it is just becoming more and more pervasive. And then you hear people say things like, well, I think or I feel or I believe or they think, they feel, they believe. And all of these comments are centered around us. What I think, what you think, what you feel, what I believe, it's all centered around us and not around God. When the truth is, it doesn't matter what we think, it doesn't matter what we feel, it doesn't matter what I believe, what matters is, what does the Word of God say? All Scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, 
for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God or woman of God may be adequate and equipped for every good work. And that comes from 2 Timothy three sixteen through 17. Scripture is for teaching us, for correcting us, for training us, for equipping us so we may be adequate and equipped. And yet so often we are allowing ourselves to be influenced by the news media, by Hollywood, by culture all around us instead of by what the Word of God says. I've even had so many people... um, Tell me, well, I know the Bible says this, but, and then they go off on their tangent about their own beliefs or their own thoughts or ideas. And I just want to say to you today, as believers, everything we think and feel and believe should be determined by what the Bible says. And if it doesn't, then we need to be ready to adjust how we think or how we feel or what we believe. And if we don't do that, then it may call into question what we believe at all. In John eight forty seven, it says this, whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. So I want to ask you today, do you hear what God is saying? Do you know what God is saying? Do you know what the word of God says? Or are you just being led by your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions. Because I want to tell you today that our emotions and our feelings are tied to our flesh. And the Bible says that when we come to Christ, that we are crucified with Christ. So it's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. Scripture also tells us that we are to walk according to the flesh. uh, Excuse me. (laughs) We're to walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. Romans puts it this way in 813. It says, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So how do we do that? How do we walk according to the spirit instead of according to the flesh? Well, I believe it's by knowing and obeying the word of God. Luke says, blessed are those who hear the word and obey it. And then the Bible also tells us that we are to be doers of the word and not hearers only. So what are you doing with the word of God? How are you following the word of God? Do you even know what the word of God says? And I'm not talking about just the Ten Commandments. Yes, follow the Ten Commandments. But the Bible has so much more to say to instruct us on how to live our lives day to day. So what does the Bible say about finances? What does the Bible say about race? What does the Bible say about marriage? What does the Bible say about unborn babies or global warming or discipline in children or how we treat our leaders? What does the Bible say about how we're to treat the nation of Israel or how we are to treat each other? And on and on and on, the Bible has so much to say so that we will be adequate and equipped to know how to live this life. And so I want to ask you today again, how do your ideas and beliefs line up with what the Bible says about all of these things? Because as believers, we have to judge everything we say, everything we do, everything we believe, everything we feel against the word of God. And if they don't match up, then we have to adjust our thinking We also have to use the word of God to judge against what other people are saying, what other people are doing or thinking or feeling, because we don't want to be led astray by false doctrines, whether it's our church leaders or political leaders or Hollywood A-listers or whoever the enemy decides to use. That's the tool that the enemy used very at the very beginning, back in the Garden of Eden, when he came to Eve. The very first thing he said to her was, did God really say? And then he went on with his deception of Eve, and she fell right into that trap because he convinced her to doubt the word of God. God had already spoken. God had already given instruction to Adam and to Eve, and yet the enemy came, and he cast doubt on her belief of the word of God, and then after that, everything else fell. 
And so I want us as believers today to be wise and we're wise by knowing the word of God. So many of our churches, including my own denomination, um, are trying to change the very word of God. My husband and I serve, our family, we all serve at the Methodist Church here in Lincolnton. And right now, um, our denomination is in a battle over whether to stay in agreement with the word of God or to begin to fall away and follow other paths. And as of right now, it looks like that our denomination might be headed for a split. We are praying that that doesn't happen, praying that people will be turned back to the Word of God. But in our church and so many other churches, denominations, we're allowing Scripture to be changed to match up with culture. But God's Word never changes. And just because we may not agree with what it says, it doesn't make it any less true. And I want to tell you today that God's truth is the standard. It is the only truth. It is what we must measure everything else against. It's what we should use as our plumb line. A plumb line, I looked it up, is a weight suspended from a string. It's used as a vertical reference line to ensure that a structure is centered. They always find the vertical axis pointing to the center of gravity, and then they can ensure that everything is right and justified and centered. And so today, I just want to ask you, are you using the Word of God as your plumb line? Is the Word of God center stage in your life so that everything else revolves around it? His Word is based on what He has spoken not what we think, not what we feel, not what we believe. I want to end today with a scripture out of Matthew, Matthew seven twenty four through 27. And it says this, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came, And the winds blew and slammed against the house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. So I want to ask you again today, Is your house built on the foundation of the Word of God? Are you using the Word of God as your plumb line where everything else is centered around it? And I want to challenge you. If you're not doing that, then start today. It's not too late. We have to know what the Word of God says so that we know how to live out this thing called life.